Hi, Billy Turnbow here with Cisco Tech. In this video, I will share 10 tips for troubleshooting your own Cisco Jabber issues. These tips can help reduce the amount of time it would take to find your root cause and may even help you solve your problems. So let's get started. Number one, ask the right questions for the issue. The first step for any Jabber issue is to ask the right types of questions to the problem. This way, you can help narrow the scope of the problem. Here are some questions you should ask when faced with a Jabber issue. How many users are experiencing the problem? Can the problem be reproduced every time, or is it intermittent? Were there any changes to the device, network, or environment recently? Is it happening on an internal connection or remotely over VPN or Expressway? Does it stay with the machine, or does it follow the user account login? These types of questions will start you off in the right direction for troubleshooting your problem. Number two, use the built-in Jabber diagnostic tools. There are three keyboard combinations that you can use while Jabber is running and in focus that will bring up hidden diagnostic tools. These are only available in Windows, however. Control-Shift-C is a tool for contact resolution testing that gives you a deeper level of information while you perform contact searches. Control-Shift-D will provide several diagnostic details about the current login session. Control-Shift-S can be used only during an active call, but this will provide audio and video data information that can be very useful for calling issues. This tool is actually available from the menu as well. Number three, use the Show Connection Status option under Help. Jabber has a very useful menu item if you go to Help and choose Show Connection Status. This provides a quick view of all services Jabber is configured to use and whether these connections were successful. Any errors can be the first step to troubleshooting any Jabber issue. Number four, reset, reinstall, upgrade, and gather logs. Many issues are resolved simply by following some common practices. Perform a full Jabber reset from the menu or manually clearing all cache. The Jabber reset menu is available after signing out of the client. All Jabber cache resides in the app data folders. The entire Jabber folder can be deleted from both local and roaming profiles since they are regenerated when Jabber is launched again. This does not affect the user contacts, but call and chat history will be erased. Reinstall the client by first uninstalling and then manually removing all trace folders in these locations. If this is an older client, consider using the latest Jabber version before reinstalling the same Jabber version. Download the latest from Cisco's site. When it's time to gather logs, the Problem Report tool is accessible from within Jabber or you can find it from the Start menu in Windows. If this is a Jabber mobile client, note that there is a debug log switch that should be activated before reproducing the problem and gathering logs. A Jabber Problem Report contains a lot of files, but the main files we're interested in for basic troubleshooting are in the Bootstrap, Config, and contacts folders as well as the various log files that are below them. The bootstrap folder contains the properties that were used during a Jabber install. The config folder contains the XML and device configurations. The contacts folder has the list of Jabber contacts the user has searched for and added. And the files under these are where we will spend the rest of our time. All logs for Jabber will have a pattern as you can see. The most recent log starts with jabber.log, and after that are 10 iterations where jabber.log.10 will be the oldest log file. Just how old depends on how much is going on with Jabber. It could be several days, or it could be a few hours. Besides the jabber.log files, there are a few others which are mostly self-explanatory except for the MSI log. This log will contain information regarding the installation of Jabber, and it's a good place to look if you're having any problems installing Jabber or you suspect it may not have been a valid installation. Number five, check the Jabber XML configuration. In the config folder, you will find a file called jabberallconfig.xml. 
This XML file is the combination of several Jabber configurations from service discovery to the client options. They are categorized into store names. We'll mainly want to look at the store name called cached tftp config store dot dat. This is where to look if you want to know what XML parameters a particular Jabber client is using, which is very useful for problems where Jabber users fail to have certain features so you can tell whether they are enabled for them. If you don't see an expected parameter, then it may be that Jabber wasn't able to obtain these from the Communications Manager's server. All versions of Jabber will have a parameter guide you can easily find from an internet search. There you can check for the default values to determine whether Jabber will have a feature enabled or disabled by default. For the rest of these troubleshooting steps, we are going to open Jabber log files and search for specific keywords. It is recommended to use a text editor program that will allow enhanced searching features. Number six, note the time of the error. Once you open a Jabber.log file, you can see what time ranges that log includes. Check to see if that Jabber log has the time of the error. If not, you may have to open several Jabber log files to get the one with the proper times. Number seven, search for error. Although searching for the generic term error will result in a lot of dubious feedback, it can still be useful if used in conjunction with a specific time frame. Regardless, it is a good place to start. Number eight, test and search with a specific username. If the issue happens or can be tested with another Jabber user, that specific username can significantly narrow down the search for an error. Searching for a username will avoid more generic results. Number nine, search for specific keywords according to the problem. There are many ways to narrow the results of your search for an error. You can try a variety of terms that fit the type of problem encountered. These may include terms like voicemail, certificate, call, or a present status like away. But there are several that are not so generic. Here's a reference list of just a few of those terms and their purpose. Number 10, reproduce the problem and immediately exit. Assuming the problem can be reproduced and the user can immediately exit Jabber, using this method will stop Jabber from generating any further logs. This means the bottom of the most recent Jabber.log file can be opened and reviewed in great detail going line by line until at least the sequence of events, if not the error itself, can be pinpointed. There are tens of thousands of log lines in one Jabber.log file, so even if this is narrowed down to a small section for deep troubleshooting, much time and confusion will be saved. Please check the Cisco TAC Video Portal site for many more videos on Cisco Jabber configurations and solutions. Thanks for watching.